In today's video, I want to talk about the torsional stress of the hull, uh, a ship's hull, and the other local stresses that a ship's hull experiences at sea and in port. So when we talk about uh, the torsion of the hull, we'll talk about the torsional stresses, but when I talk about local stresses, I'll be talking about the stresses as experienced uh, during a ship's uh, panting, uh, pounding, uh, diagonal loads, vibrational stresses and dry docking loads. Now, this video is very important, especially for chief mate candidates, chief mates and masters, um, because uh, when you start sailing as chief mates and masters, it is important to understand these stresses and loads that a ship's hull can bear or does bear, uh, especially with the kind of loading you are carrying out on your ship, the way the cargo has been loaded on the ship or the ship's movement at sea or in rough seas, uh, how the ship's movement affects the stresses as experienced by it and how it affects the overall construction of the ship. Uh, in my future videos, I'll be talking about how uh, the ship's construction compensates for these stresses. I have previously made a video on the stiffening of the ship's plating and you can find it in the description section below. But I'll make more videos on how the ship is uh, strengthened longitudinally as well as transversely. I will also make a videos on uh, showing you detailed pictures of how a ship experiences a torsional stresses in different parts of its structure. I don't want to include everything in one video, otherwise it becomes too long. So uh, let's get started with today's video. So firstly, I want to talk about the torsional stress as experienced by the ship's hull. So torsion actually occurs in a seaway. And when there is an asymmetry in the mass distribution over the horizontal plane of the ship. So let's take an example. If there is a weight of 100 tons on the starboard side of the forward part of the ship, and then just to compensate it, you put an equivalent weight of 100 tons on the port side, but on the aft part of the ship. So then there will be something known as a torsion or a torque. It experiences a torsion or a torque. torque. If both weights are 10 meters from the center line, the torsional movement will be measured by 100 tons multiplied by 10 meters, the distance from its center line, which will equal to 1000 tons meter. That will be the torsion as experienced by the ship's hull. In adverse weather conditions, especially when the waves come in at an angle, the torsion can actually increase as a consequence of the asymmetric, unequal distribution of the upward pressure exerted by the water on the submerged part of the hull. The torsion causes a ship to be subject to extra stresses and deformations. And this can result in leaking hatches and defects in hatch combing corners, especially open ships, such as ships with large deck openings tend to be torsionally weak and are sensitive to this. I can give you a few examples, a few examples being container ships with large hatch covers, large hatch openings, and then the modern box hold general cargo ships, large bulk carriers, especially the cape size bulk carriers, which have large hatch openings and they, they face enormous torsional forces, especially when the ocean waves come in under an angle and are specially strengthened in hatch combing corners. So this was uh, about torsional stresses. Uh, I will next talk about the panting stresses because the panting stresses and strain can, can sometimes cause severe damage to the ship structure. You can see in the picture here itself, uh, this damage uh, to the forward part of the ship has been caused by a panting strain. Now here the entire four peak tank, you can see in the ship, the, on, in the picture itself, the, the four peak tank of the vessel has been completely torn off. This vessel must be a vessel of about uh, 100,000 tons of dead weight. And if uh, such a big ship uh, can suffer a damage due to the panting strain, you can just imagine uh, what kind of uh, strain can be suffered or experienced by all the other ships as well. Now panting stresses occur in the forward part of the ship and this happens during the pitching movement of the ship. The pitching movement is when the vessel's bow goes up and down in, a, in the rough sea, especially in not rough sea, but yes, when there is sea and swell. Now the constantly changing water pressure 
increases the stress in the skin of the ship and the frames of the ship in the forward part. Now panting stress, remember, you have to remember it. This is not a result of hydrostatic pressure. It is more a result of hydrodynamic pressure. So movement of the ship, the movement of the ship with respect to the, uh, the, the, of course, the sea and the soil and the way it interacts with the uh, forward part of the ship. Now to reduce the panting stress effect, we have panting beams in transverse direction and stringers against the ship's shell are added to the forepeak, the area aft of the forepeak and also the aft peak structure just to strengthen it. Then I'll talk about pounding. Now pounding uh, is when pitching becomes so heavy that the entire bow comes above the water and then slams or pounds uh, that is called pounding especially with a flat fore ship such as in bulk carriers and tankers the dynamic forces on the flat bottom when that flat bottom beats at the sea surface can result in damage to plating and internals plates can be set in and internals can be deformed to prevent this kind of damage thicker plates are fitted and more internals at smaller distances such as floors at every frame and more keelsons. And then I talk about diagonal loads. Now these occur when the ship is asymmetrically laden and during rolling of the ship in waves. The effect of the diagonal loads is reduced by the addition of frame brackets, deck beam brackets, cross frames and transverse bulkheads. Now I know I'm talking about all these structures and you say that you know I have no idea what you're talking about. So that's why like I said in my next video, I'll try to show you the pictures as well uh, and because I want to go into the details of this and if I include everything in one video, this becomes too long. So apologies if you can't imagine what these structures look like, but uh, I will definitely show it to you in my next video. Uh, then I'll talk about vibration stresses. Now vibration stresses can be caused by vibrations that are caused by the main engine, the movement of the main engine the forces on the aft part of the ship caused by the rotation of the propeller as well as the way the waves interact with the ship's hull. Now vibration of a construction occurs when the own resonance frequency is equal to the first, second or third order of an induction source that is the main engine or the propeller etc. Adding weight and structure and so changing the resonance frequency or local stiffening are actually the way to in counteract for these stresses. Vibration is a growing concern as ships are being built lighter and lighter due to the use of high tensile steel which allows thinner construction at the same strength and the application of better paints which eliminates the need of corrosion surplus. Vibration can result in fatigue defects, noise, discomfort for the crew but it can also be eliminated by inducing another vibration source with contrapulses. I'll talk about that as well in my next video. Finally, we are talking about dry docking loads. Now these forces are the result of vertical upward forces in a way of the location of the keel and to a lesser extent, the side blocks of the dry docks. Now keel blocks, which are supposed to take the total weight of the ship also add to this. The side blocks are put in dry dock to keep the ship upright, but of course also to take the weight of the ship. When calculating block loads, only the key blocks are taken into consideration. So as soon as your vessel sits on the key blocks or some of the weight does is absorbed by the side blocks, uh, of course, a certain loads act on the ship structure as well because of the weight of the ship. It's such, it's such a heavy structure. Uh, even though it is supported, uh, it does create or add a kind of a stress or a load to the ship structure. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think uh, uh, in, the, in my next video, I'll talk about how these are all compensated for. So I hope you like this video. I'm trying to keep these videos short so that they are not too boring or too lengthy for you. Uh, let me know uh, through your likes and comments as to what you think about this video. Thanks, guys, and bye.